All right, so I'm gonna talk to you guys about Knockout JS. Uh, is anybody here familiar with Knockout? Heard of it before? Heard of it? Okay. Uh, anybody used MVVM frameworks like WPF for Windows people? I don't know. These people aren't so thick here, I guess. Uh, but uh, MVVM, Model View View Model, is a pattern uh, similar to MVC, uh, Model View Controller, but uh, a little bit different. Uh, it kind of relies on this concept called data binding which creates, so you, you keep all of your data in this object that's similar to a model, but it caters more to your view, so you call it a view model. And then you bind your view to it. So you basically say, well, this part of my view should have this part of data in it. And then most of, I mean, in Knockout it always works this way, but in other things it doesn't always. But uh, in Knockout, both, once you bind them together, it's a two-way binding. So if you bind like a text box to some property on this object in JavaScript, if a user types in the text box, that value is now in that JavaScript property. And if you change that JavaScript property, the text box value updates. So it's kind of a cool, uh, it's a cool pattern because you don't have to, like, when you're working with jQuery, a lot of times you end up with these uh, ridiculous selectors that kind of just, you know, hang out all the way through your, um, through your JavaScript code, and that kind of sucks. Because then you change your structure, or you change an ID, or something like that, and all of a sudden nothing works, and you have to find every place that that ID is referenced, and update all the references. It's a pain in the ass. So, anyway, uh, I gave this talk about a year ago, and it ran like an hour 15, so I'm gonna like power through it really fast. So feel free to interrupt me at any point. Um, I kind of got this uh, seven step thing going on. So the, the first time I gave it, I actually coded it with everybody, but I'm just gonna like step through each of the steps and show you like the, like the key points and then go through the code. I'm not gonna write it per se, um, but uh, feel free to interrupt if you have questions or I, you know, get you lost. But anyway, so uh, the app, I guess, uh, is this uh, thing that I've lovingly named Court. It's a, a Drupal client, so uh, I know the people in that area is probably more familiar with Dribbble, but uh, it's a, uh, a place where you upload screenshots of what you're working on, basically. Uh, so this is the app that's written in Knockout. Uh, it fetches this list of shots from the Dribbble API, and it shows them. We've got infinite scrolling going on. It fetches more shots. You can select one of them. You view it over here. You got a couple of key keyboard shortcuts. You can hit like U, and it'll pop open a new tab, show you the user, everything they do. And you've got uh, P, O, and S are all different other keyboard shortcuts to let you jump to the shot or the, the player or the profile. And you can use arrows to navigate through them and it scrolls and stuff like that. And we've got these feeds up in the top right corner. So those were just popular items. Uh, everyone shows you items from everyone and then debuts, so the first shot someone uploads when they join Drupal. So hopefully, if we hit this, then we know the internet's getting a little flaky. Uh, but it will, hopefully, you'll be able to see. So that being said, oh, I'm Andrew Dunkman, by the way. Uh, A Dunkman on Twitter, Twitter. Feel free to tweet me with questions and stuff like that. Uh, I've been working with Knockout for about two, two and a half years, uh, working on just random websites. So. Anyway, uh, any questions before I dive in? And I'll dive on in. Okay, so uh, I've got seven steps. The first step, I'm gonna show you basically a dummy index.html page. It's gonna show you placeholders where everything's gonna go. So you, you know, show you what, what style gets applied so it looks like this. So then we can have a baseline at that point. That's gonna have basically no JavaScript in it. Um, and then uh, step two, we're gonna add these feeds or lists in the top right corner there popular everyone debuts, we're gonna add that in, we're gonna add the ability to locate where that is in the API. Then step three, we're gonna load the list of shots. So it'll load the tile view that you saw over here back when the internet was cooperating. And then step four, we're going to load in this section here and show how that works, the selected shot. Step five, we're gonna talk about, talk about custom binding handlers. So data binder, binding, you know, I talked about that text box. You bind a text box to a property in JavaScript and they both update magically. You can also write custom, that's like a, a value binding. You're binding the value of the text box to this item. But you can also write other data binders. So there are binders for like click events. So you data bind a click to this function in your view model. And there's a whole bunch of them you can write your own. So we'll talk about two of them in here. One of them that does time ago, so it'll tell you jQuery time ago, it tells you how long ago something happened. So instead of showing a date time, we show, you know, three hours ago or something like that. 
Uh, so a custom binding handler for that, and the other one is the infinite scrolling one that, as you scroll, it'll load more pages. So it's, it's kind of cool, you can do that um, very simply, and we'll show you how to do that. And that's step five. Step six, we're gonna show you the keyboard shortcuts, jamming on some keys down there. And then step seven, we're just gonna throw this intro text in and call it done. So that's the whole app. It is on GitHub, I don't know if I mentioned, but uh, github.com slash adunkbin slash dribble client. Dribble client is three Bs, uh, much like Cordis, three Rs. Uh, and it's also hosted on GitHub pages if you want to reverse that and see it, on, see it live. Uh, yeah, so that being said, let's dive in. Uh, cool. So this is uh, the first step. So this is basically the placeholder. There's no knockout magic going on here. So this is um, all, the, all the HTML and CSS goodness going on. We got some feeds up there. We've got shot title, player name, created time, this shot here, and then a list of things that look something like that. So we'll dive into that code real quick. Get rid of this guy. So this index, uh, nothing too magic about it. There's a header, that, that, that list of feeds that going on right there. Then we've got this uh, section of shots, which is just list items of these images. And then these uh, keyboard shortcuts inside of this uh, aside here that has a shot container that contains like the shot title and the image and all the stuff like that. Uh, so this is, I, you know, it's, it's nice to have just the HTML here and thankfully when we add the knockout in, it's not, it doesn't really complicate it much more. So that's pretty cool. Um, I've broken apart these files. Uh, we've got this ko.binding handlers. This is where the custom binding handlers will go. So when you create, when you write your own binding handlers, you just stick them on this ko.binding handlers object on the window object. And uh, we'll talk about, we just add some stuff to there. So we'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, I've created these models, which are not, have nothing to do with knockout. They're just functions that take in an object we got from the API and I just pluck off the properties that I want and throw everything else away. So that's not, uh, not anything specific to uh, to knock out there, and same with the player. There's also that the player is like the user, and the shot is the image upload. It's it's all like basketball themed. So um, then these view models is, is the VM of MVVM, uh, and there's pretty much nothing happening here. Uh, it's just an empty object right now. We have nothing in it, and we're throwing it on a window .court object .view model is what we're exposing that as. So we're exposing everything on the dot window.court, the, the one public thing. And then there's also, we extend that window.court.view model object with a dot shot and a dot list in these files. And there's really nothing here. I just have some stuff to make sure that you're not being stupid and forgetting to include files, because I do that all the time. So that's pretty much it for step one. Any questions before we move on to step two? That wasn't really anything about knockout, but that's the baseline, so step two. All right, so I'll start with the index HTML here. Uh, so what we've just done is we've added that those lists in the top right corner, the debuts, popular, everyone, stuff like that. So this, you, if you remember, they were here in a, in a list item in the first one. So what we've done is we've basically taken out the actual list items and we added this template. So data bind uh, is, the, is the property you add in, in Knockout to like, you know, do something special about this. And then you're saying template, which is our binding handler. So we're going to say template list feeds. So look for a template named list feeds and then render it inside of this UL. So this is, you might know that jQuery templates have been deprecated since this was created a year ago. But you can easily sub this in for any templating language. I'm just using jQuery templates. So just a, a sidebar. So I'm saying each, each name URL in list.feeds. So We'll have this, uh, I'll show you up here. There's this uh, ko.apply apply bindings function. So this is what you call when, you, that's your initialization step. So that's you saying, hey, knockout, I want you to bind this object, model to this page. You can also specify a second argument that has a specific selector. So if you wanted to bind knockout just to one section of your page instead of the whole thing, um, you could do it that way. Uh, we'll talk at the end. Hopefully, we'll have time. Uh, we'll talk at the end about like what, what's good fits for Knockout and what's good fits for things such as like Backbone or something like that. Uh, what Knockout kind of breaks down into like 
I've had both, both situations, where it's really good, and sometimes it breaks down when you get into some other stuff that I'll talk about later. So this apply bindings is really the magic there that, that starts, that goes through your document and looks for all those data bind things and actually sets up your, your binding for you. So this first line here, right before that, I'm just saying, OK, initialize to the popular list by default. So that's what we want to show first. So that, yeah, this template's really not, nothing, nothing too magic. So list.feeds, since we're data binding to window.court.viewmodel, then list.feeds is viewmodel.list.feeds. And so we're saying each of the feeds, then we're going to iterate over, and we're going to do a data bind on this. And we're binding two things, CSS and click, which I'll talk about in a sec. And then we're dumping in the name of the feed. So if we look at list.feeds, so if you model dot list dot feeds is this just a plain old JavaScript object that has three URLs in it. So this is where we get the location inside of the Dribble API. So we're just going to say, okay, look, whenever I say I'm in feed popular, then it actually translates to this location. Um, so we're, we're calling this ko.observable function here and extending it. Uh, and that's saying that whatever, so anytime you want to have something that's observable, so in your view model, something that you want your view to be able to know when it changes, then you need to initialize a ko.observable. There are two types of observables, observable and observable array. They're pretty self-explanatory. Use observable array when you're using arrays. Um, so list is ko.observable. So that's when we're saying, in our index, we're saying um, up at the top, list is, we're calling it a function and saying popular. So we want the popular list. So that's saying, hey, anybody who's listening to me, since I'm an observable, I will fire off an event and say, anyone who cares, my value is now popular. So in this viewmodel.list, we now have this list.subscribe underneath that, which says, hey, whenever this value changes, I'd like you to exec execute this function. And what the function does is it executes an AJAX request. It fetches the shots from the Drupal API based on looking up the URL here in the feeds property. And then I want to create a list of shots, an array of shots, rather. And I'm going to add shot objects into that from everything we get back in the API. And then I'm going to set this.shots. So this.shots is another observable property. This is an observable array. So it's just an array of items, and it's observable. So the special thing you get about observable arrays over observables is that you get basically change detection on your arrays. So whenever that value updates, if you have something bound to a collection of it, like we, did, like we are in the view, we're binding to you know, the whole list of items. And when we add things to it, we only want it to render templates for the new items. You know, we don't need to re-render all the old ones. So observable array does that for you. Yeah? Does it also observe when properties on items in the array change? Inside of the array? Like yeah. Objects in the array, when those properties change, so, it, so you're saying like if you had an array full of objects yep. and say the object had a property of name and you change the name property, yeah. would it re-render? Yeah. No, because the unless the name property of that object was also an observable. Okay. So the observables will, if you create observables inside of observables, so they'll cache, cache them. they'll, yeah. or not cache, cascade, there we go. Yeah, yeah, you can nest them. So, so, that's, so that's pretty much all the magic we're doing here. Um, that is about it. The template in here is really where you know the, the heavy list, lifting occurs. This CSS property is CSS data binder. So it's saying whenever this value is true, whenever list equals name, then apply the class of selected to this item. So whenever, so, so whenever we say, you know, when we initialize, we said popular is, is selected by default. So we're storing that in our view model. And this is where we're saying, I'd like to add the class to this item if it's the one that's selected. So then we can style it. So we can say, you know, put that little nice bubble around it, stuff like that. And then this click data bind is saying, whenever you click on me, I'd like to execute this function. I'd like to set view models list to my name. So when you click on the debut, you want to set the view model property of debut, or view model property of list to debut. So that's about it. We can give this a refresh. And you can see that our feeds up top have been replaced by these three items, popular everyone debuts. And when you, uh, I can't find my track sign. When you click on them, so the selected class is what's giving it that light highlight there. So it's, it's very different from like 
traditionally jQuery stuff because you're in your HTML, you're saying data bind this. You're specifying the actions you'd like to occur in your HTML, but your code for that all stays in your view model. And as you can imagine, if you went to the TDD talk earlier today, uh, it's very good for testing because you can test against your view model. Your view model has nothing specific to your view. It has no selectors or anything like that. So you can just run unit tests against it. You don't have to know, you don't have to create DOMs and all that junk. So uh, that's it for step two. Any questions before we move on to step three? Cool, step three is going to be uh, loading the shots into that list. So when we selected the thing, we already had the Ajax call that loaded it from the API, but now all we have to do is throw it in our page and we should be good to go. All right, so step two. So now we've basically, we've written this, uh, so the, the shots was also a list. We've written another one of these templates and we're gonna say that, so the template syntax is a little different here. The one up above we just said template list feeds, which is a shorthand syntax. But you can expand that to say template and if you pass in an object you can say, well, the name is really list item, but I wanna execute the template for each item in list.shots. So this is where you really get the benefit of the observable arrays, not updating values that already exist. So you know, if we're, if we're appending new pages when we're doing infinite scrolling, we don't want to re-render everything above it. So this is what does that. So that, I mean, this template is very simple. It just renders a list item that has the image in it, dumps in the data, and it gives it a class of teaser. And I think that's the only real change in here, if I recall just adding that template. Since, since we already exposed the property in the view model called shots, and we've already fetched the things with Ajax and thrown them into that collection, since that's observable, we just have to wire it up and it automatically gets <laughs> dumped in there for us. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that's all I got for that one. Questions on that before we move on? All right, step four is uh, we're gonna do a, we're gonna add the ability to click on one of these, and it actually, well, if we click on it now, it doesn't do anything. But uh, we're going to implement this section over here, getting it to show up there. So, oh. Step four. All right, so in this file here, the, sec the, the section shot container now has been replaced by another template, as you can imagine. Uh, it's data bound to this property called shot on our view model. So view model dot shot is this guy, and all that is is a plain old observable. So basically, what's going to happen is when we click on an item in that in that list of things over on the side uh, here, we're going we're going to execute a click handler that says whatever data item I am, throw it in view model dot shot. And because we've thrown it in view model dot shot, that's an observable. It'll say, hey, anybody care that my property just changed? I'd like you to do things. And then we're gonna bind, we've bound this template to the value of that item. So by clicking on it and setting the property, it's rendered this template over here. So there's really not much that you have, much code you have to do there. You just write this KO observable, and then this inside of that list of items, we now have this click data bind. So whenever you click on that list item, we're going to execute the function that sets the view model dot shot to be data, which is the term in jQuery template to refer to all of the data that you're currently rendering. So that's the shot object. So that's pretty much it there. So now this is empty because the template doesn't have any content in it because there's nothing in view model dot shot. You can click on it, and by setting view model dot shot to the value of the, to that JavaScript object, it's rendered this template over here and given you the view. So you can start to see how quickly you can really build UIs like this because you can just, you know, find things to this JavaScript object, update the JavaScript object, and you're good to go. So that's step four. Questions? Questions? Okay, we're gonna do step five, and then, which is our custom binding handlers. Then we'll do a couple more things, and we're uh, getting pretty close. So in step five, we wrote custom binding handlers. So one of the things that we wanted to do with this application, if you remember from the beginning, is that we had infinite scrolling on it. And sometimes infinite scrolling can be really a pain in the ass to implement, depending on how you do it. 
so one of the cool things about the, the way I usually write binding handlers is I write my ideal syntax into this data binding. So that's what I did for this one. So it would be really nice if we could say, hey, body, when you scroll, call list.fetch if you're within 500 pixels of the bottom. Right? That'd be cool. So then it's like, okay, well, how do we actually implement that? So this scroll is a binding handler, and we know that it looks for binding handlers on ko.binding handlers, the, the object. So we can go in here and write this scroll function, or scroll object, rather. And it takes in three properties. Uh, you don't have to write them all. Init, update, and remove, I think. I never use the third one. Init and update uh, of the two ones. So uh, init is the one that I care about in this case, and then update would be when you, uh, potentially when you need to do other things. It comes into the next page. It comes in at the next uh, step why that updates there. But basically, what we're going to do is we're just going to say, okay, well, all these parameters are acquired. This, this init function takes, or this, the functions of a binding handler, sorry, getting ahead of myself a little bit, uh, takes in element, value accessor. It also can take in properties of uh, other, like everything that's in the data bind. You can get all the other properties that are set on that, and you can also get the view model context. But all of the other two parameters I didn't care about. The value accessor is here. You'll notice that I call it as a function, and it's named a value accessor. It's not just the value of the, of the thing that's getting passed into it. And that's because if you remember all of those observables, we had to execute them as functions to get the property, the values out of them. And that's because when you execute as a function, then you know it can send off events rather than just reading the property. Um, and it's an accessor for the same reason. So if you use the value of something in here, all of a sudden, this is automatically data bound to whatever you've used. So if you use, say, viewmodel.shot, then every time viewmodel.shot gets called, or gets changed rather, it'll recall this function. So as long as you use the observable, you have a subscription to it. So we have a couple things here about shot. So, so we have a couple, this is just a, a weird like edge case that came up about uh, viewing and viewporting, and it's lame. And we can talk about it later if you care about, if you care about it. Uh, and then we're binding to the viewport, the scroll up binding handler. So we're binding to the scroll thing, and we're saying, you know, if we're, if we're within whatever number of pixels we said from the area in which we said, in this case the bottom, then we're gonna say, you're gonna do settings.call. We're gonna call that function that you asked for. So that's where, if we remember back here, we had call list.fetch. So viewmodel.list, has a fetch function we've written, which basically just says, okay, figure out what, what page we're on, and then fetch the next page. And then that fetch function is really not very ma magical. It just says, okay, add it to the list of shots that we have. And by adding it to the list of shots, now they've been appended to the list in there. So not, not too much magic. Three minutes, all right. Not too much magic there. Um, but it, uh, well, I guess a little bit of magic there. Uh, but it's not too bad. We also wrote a time ago handler so that when you select this, we get this 19 hours ago going up there. Uh, that time ago handler is significantly simpler. Uh, it's at the top of this file. It is one line long. So it just has an update function. So every time the value of this changes, I'd like to call jQuery.timeago on the date time that we get from here. Uh, and that's about it for that. Uh, that gives us infinite scrolling, so as we scroll down, we'll notice that when we get close to the bottom here, it'll execute that list.fetch function, and it will fetch everything. So it's, it's really, not it's really powerful for doing things like that. Get check on step six. Uh, step six, we add keyboard shortcuts and linking. I'm gonna skip it really quick because it's really just standard jQuery stuff. Whenever we hit these keyboard, these keys on the window, then we're just going to execute these functions in our view model, and that's going to add more things and do more things. So that's not too bad. Uh, and then step seven, we just add intro text. So that's uh, that being said, that's pretty much the whole application. Um, I have found that Knockout is really good for writing apps that all kind of interact together. So this whole app, like. If you were writing something in like Backbone or something like that, you could write you know, a model, I would guess, that would take care of this and these, and then this would be a collection view. But in that case, you'd only have really one model for this thing, maybe two for this, for the list at the top, and you'd have one collection, really. 
And so there, it really doesn't really give you a whole lot of benefit, in my opinion, because Knockout, in, or Backbone rather, imposes a lot of like, uh, like it gives you routers and collections and models and all of that stuff is like, it's great, but for this, this thing it didn't really matter that much. And you still have to use, you know, like selectors and template rendering and those functions by yourself. But with Knockout, you kind of just get that for free, and the observable updating magic stuff is pretty awesome for that, uh, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, but if your app starts to get really like modular and you have nested rendering action things, so like some apps, like you might click on something and then it like renders a model, uh, a modal overlay up here or something that's a settings thing, and you have specific functions for executing the save function of that settings or something like that. That kind of thing kind of seems to lead me more towards uh, Backbone rather than Knockout, but they're really pretty different, um, pretty different frameworks. So, so that's pretty much. The, uh, any questions, really quick? That's pretty much the overview of Knockout. A million miles a minute. So, so yeah. If you have if you have future questions, Andrew Dunkman, A Dunkman on Twitter, feel free to shoot them to me. And that's about it. Those sources on GitHub as well, if you want to look at it in more in depth. Yeah, it's at uh, dribble client, dribble client dot git hub. No, adunkman, adunkman dot github dot com slash dribble client. Yeah, here we go. So it's hosted on GitHub pages now. Whatever the syntax is for that, it is on there. I don't know. I'll have to find it. It's it's on GitHub pages. So. <laughs> Whatever their URLs, I thought I thought I typed it in right. Maybe I broke it at some point, but supposedly on there. So, cool. Good. Good. All right.